Hello. Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Rockwood, part number 629-CRM. This is a door viewer. This is a slightly less common door viewer in the sense that it is for a thinner door. But it's really not for a thinner door, it's for a inch and three quarter thick door that has a panel construction in it that then effectively makes the door thickness, you know, between five, six, 15 sixteenths, 15 sixteenths, an inch and a quarter. That's what this is for. Okay. So it's slightly less common in that regard. It is certainly very common that it has a privacy cover on it. Those are, I wouldn't say all the rage. I would say that it's would be considered best practice to have a privacy cover over the back side of your door viewer, especially in hotel, you know, hotel motel applications um, with, in the not too distant past, a lot of, um, you know, really quite evil shenanigans that have gone on with manipulating the placement of door viewers in these public places. So this is the 629. That means that this is for that 15 16 inch and a quarter. It's going to be a 190 degree view. Okay. It's going to have the privacy cover. The CRM means that the bezel is in a polished chrome type finish. And the inside is going to be also compatible with a polished chrome type look. A little handle that's there. You'll notice that this has a big sticker on it. Um, it is written in NFPA 80, National Fire Protection Agency. Um document 80 which is a standard it's not a code it's a standard that standard says that if you're using a door viewer in a fire rated door it must be labeled it must bear visual evidence that it is compliant with the fire rating requirements uh, necessary okay it is a listed product means that there is paperwork on file and that's the listing number above there but it also beyond that bears visual evidence that this could be removed under, under the duress of a fire door inspection, the fire door inspection auditor or the authority having jurisdiction might say to the owner or the owner's rep to uh, ask them to remove this from the door to make sure that it has that label on it. Okay, that's mandatory. So that is there. This is a compliance with UL listed fire doors up to hour and a half. Um, it's robust. It's, it's heavy. It weighs about eight-tenths. Pardon me. It weighs about point. It weighs about a twelfth or a thirteenth of a pound, about a twelfth of a pound. So they're 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 heavy. 0 0.08 pound. Okay. Really nice, attractive sort of finish. While we've got it threaded all the way down, that will get you down to fifteen sixteenths. We thread that all the way out. I'd like to see what the maximum. Get that in there and <clears throat> thread it let's try it with my other hand say we just thread it twice yeah you'll be at an inch and a quarter you know at an absolute maximum um now the diameter of the body of this item, <clears throat> and they're going to want you to drill a hole that's 9 sixteenths of an inch thick. And that's not so bad, 9 sixteenths. What I mean is the diameter of the body is 0 .545. 0 .545 and 9 sixteenths is 0 .5625. What's nice about that is, oh, we're not done with the caliper, is that the outside diameter of the inside portion is rather generous. It's, it's larger than standard. That outside diameter is going to be 0 .877, 0 .877. So it's basically 7 eighths of an inch. You've got lots of room. Um, should you get a little aggressive with that hole, you've got some room to play with there. The, the difference between the outside dimension of the inside plate and the hole that you're drilling, the outside dimension of the exterior portion is 
0.025. So basically one and a 32nd outside diameter. Okay, let's talk about let's let's talk about how we're going to install this item and where we're going to install it. Now, looking at the manufacturer's um, extended description down below this video, um, you're going to be able to look at the recommended location for viewers. <clears throat> the to be to be handicap compliant, to be compliant with ADA usable building guidelines and what what is federal code, it's federal law, um, 43 inch from the finished floor is what's recommended. You got some play in there. You can't exceed 48 inch, but 43 inch would be accessible, um, or the, the, the height determined to be the height that would be typically ideal. I don't know if there's a passage in, in, a, in ADA that states it is at 43. I'm quite sure a range is permissible. Um, I've never, you know, range between 34 and 48 inch or within 12 inch or not more than 60 inch you know that sort of language a range 60 inch would be considered the standard but put it anywhere you like you know if you if, if you've got a family of people that are six foot two um you know probably might put it to where it best suits your needs your particular needs although um you might want to put it somewhere that would accommodate the average height of the person um, the point is, is when you install this item, you're going to want to uh, obviously drill a hole. Um, whether or not you drill all the way through the door uh, is up to you. It's not a practice that I recommend um, because as I'm drilling through the door, you breach through the other side. You, If it's a wood door, you can tear or flare out those wood, the, the fibers that make up the wood veneer itself. And you don't want to erupt or burst through the other side or chip part of the wood because, you know, as we pointed out earlier, with the purpose of giving the outside dimensions, not a lot of room there, okay? Now, drilling from either side is how I like to do it, um, and it, because it will give me a really clean hole because I can control that. Um, a 916 hole saw might be nice. Um, a fly cutter, just a, what we call a fly bit or a spade bit with those outside cutters that will score nice are good. Um, a Forstner bit would give you a very clean hole to start. The issue with drilling from either side is you have to obviously make sure you are drilling in the accurate location on either side. And what you need to be careful with, um, I'm going to detail here on screen. So let's switch to the screen view. Now here is the item that we're looking at. And this was the discussion about the location. We'll get to the product brochure in a moment. What I was driving at earlier was talking about being sure that you're going to drill it in the right location because you don't want to get yourself in trouble with it being in the wrong location, which is not necessarily difficult to do. And what I mean is this. Okay, here's what I mean. Pretend that these are all the same size. What we're looking at here is a square edge door. That's square. We're looking at a rabbited edge door. We're looking at a beveled edge door. That door is beveled. Okay, it's beveled. There's a distance there, a gap. This is a radius edge door. The point is, is when you hook your tape measure and go over to measure on either side, it's really helpful to know what edge you have and to compensate if you have especially a beveled edge door, which is very likely what you're going to have because you don't want to mark, you know, let's just say 17 and 7 eighths um, over from one side over here and you are not going to be in the same location. You're going to, you're going to, measuring it from on the small side, you're going to be away from it. You'll be too far in. So compensating that. Now that dimension is assuming that you're probably going to have a beveled edge door. Oh, just to draw it gro just to draw it grossly out of context. It's one eighth two. Okay. What that means is for every two inch, the distance 
from here to here is going to be an eighth of an inch. Okay, so if your door is inch and three quarter, it's just going to be shy on inch and an eighth because the term back set is, is actually measured from the center of the thickness of the door to the center line, the center. So now it doesn't matter if I've got a square edge, if I've got a radius edge, if I have a rabbited edge door, it doesn't matter. I'm measuring from the center of the door. Wherever that might be is where I'm measuring from. So be mindful of that. Since we've got the screen view going here, let's take a look at the product brochure. The 629 is at the bottom of that page. And that's a nice chart because it's going to show you the other models that have that are 190 degree. So this chart is nice because it will show you how the part number changes as your door thickness changes. So again, what you're dealing with with these thinner doors is not a thinner door, but you're dealing with a door you know, that will have a panel detail to it. Forgive my poor drawing, but that panel detail can be like this. You know, where this is inch and three quarter, well, this is, you know, inch and one quarter, or whatever the case is. And that's where that's going to come into play. It could be three quarter inch. You know, you could have just literally a flat panel here. You know, you've got you've got just a shaker panel. Now you've got three quarter inch. Okay. The rest of the product brochure is indeed handy because it will show you all of the door viewers from Rockwood. Okay. Whether it be the degree that you're seeing, uh, 160, 190. 190 is always going to be the larger 916 hole. The 160s will be the half inch hole. Obviously, different finishes: antique bronze, brass, bright chrome, satin, nickel. They're all not available in all of those colors all the time uh, because they're not. Um, you know, these with the heavy-duty privacy cover are only in the bright chrome. But the truth of the matter is you see very little of the actual hardware. So, you know, will this bright chrome be compatible with your stainless, your nickel, your satin chrome? I would argue it would be. You know, if you... And, and then also, of course, if you have a unusual door thickness, panel thickness, and you want a privacy cover, you will be presented with the take it or leave it sort of scenario because there are not a lot of options for those unusual thicknesses. The 622 is an incredibly common unit. Okay. Now, back to the product that we're looking at here. There is a link to the manufacturer's page right here. And on that page, you will be able to review not only all of the Rockwood products that we sell, of which there are thousands, which is an understatement, a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the manufacturer's full line product catalog for their core line, their trim and auxiliary, kick plates, push and pull hardware, door stops, flat goods, things of that nature. But their architectural door poles as well, and the Rockwood RM series is a hundred plus page catalog of every possible imaginable design of door pole different architectural base materials, uh, stainless steel, bronze, brass, aluminum, uh, leather wrapped, as you're seeing here, quite exquisite, leather wrapped, rubber wrapped, as you're seeing here, wood, they'll, they'll be able to do premium, standard premium and super premium wood types, this Arbor Tech. Um, I believe this is all hickory that you're seeing here, but they have maybe eight different species of wood that they can do. So the options are nearly limitless. There was also a marketing document that I had seen in the not too distant past from their sister company McKinney. Uh, well from Asa, from Asa Abloy. Um, custom decorative hardware program. Design or modify. We will make it. Basically, this document says, get a napkin, scribble your design on your napkin and send it to us. You know, well, okay, there it is. I must have subconsciously recalled seeing that. Um, and it's really great because we do a lot of work with Rockwood, and I can tell you firsthand that they all but encourage requests for specials. They all, they, they, 
they almost ask you to send it to them. And they do a really great job, uh, a great job at doing it. If they've got the tool to do it, they will be able to make that material for you. So I would really think about uh, Rockwood um, when it comes to the material that they sell. Let's finish up this video on camera. So in conclusion, I hope it becomes quite clear and evident that I'm partial to Rockwood. I like their people. I like the quality of their products. They are the epitome of prompt, reliable, and predictable. They very rarely miss a, lead, a shipping lead time. Um, they are special in the sense that you call there, and generally the person who answers the phone, here, here's how this goes. May I speak to technical support? I can help you. And nine out of ten times, that person can help you. You don't need to have it escalated to engineering. You don't need to go to technical support. All of their people are lifers, so to speak. They spend a lot of time in the industry um, and do a great job. Really, really grateful. Um, it's easy to represent a very high-quality product line that is all but independent. You need to do very little work. Keep Rockwood in your forethought. I know that they've been around since the mid-20th century. I don't know the date. I believe I have a catalog that might be dated 1957 or thereabouts. Um, it, may, it might only be about a 20-page catalog, so they were probably a relatively new company at that time. But I believe their company history is listed somewhere in one of their documents. Any questions on the Rockwood 629 CRM door viewer or any other Rockwood product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.